Hello everyone, I'm Professor Geek. Welcome back to the channel. I did want to provide another archetype video for today. And I will provide some links in the top right hand corner to some videos uh, that I've done previously that cover some of the terminology. So I'll try and give you a brief recap here. But uh, if, you, if you want a little bit more explanation, you can click on those links. What I want to talk about in this video is a number of people uh, recently, but occasionally, uh, it's a question that con continually comes up, is how to better write aspirational heroes. And if you don't know what I mean by aspirational, I'll give you a quick recap. There are two basic archetypes that any superhero falls into. Uh, there, there are the sub-archetypes, you know, where we really get into some more of the nitty-gritty, but the two basic ones are they're either aspirational or what's called cathartic motivational. Aspirational are very rare, and they're the heroes that people seem unable to write nowadays. Uh, the, you know, your complaints about, oh, they're so hard to write, or they're, they're so uh, flat or, or unrelatable. That's because people don't write them well. But the aspirational heroes are the ones that are just good. They're just good from the beginning. They have a central purity, uh, a central goodness. They want to do the right thing simply because it's the right thing to do. They don't have to suffer any great trauma or any great uh, moral failing or make some huge mistake in order to want to do the right thing. They just do from the beginning. And we need these characters. We need the aspirational characters because they're the ones that uh, give us something to strive for. They give us a standard. They should be comparatively few, but we need them nonetheless. It's, it's desperately important that we have them there because otherwise the rest of the characters don't make sense. And when we ourselves can't really orient ourselves in, uh, in terms of mythology. So that's the aspirational. And then the cathartic motivational are the characters that provide a kind of catharsis because they do have moral failings. Uh, they do go through horrible trauma and whatnot and the, the feelings and emotions and uh, reactions attached to that. But they're motivational in that they don't just stay there and wallow in that. Whether it's a mistake, a trauma, or whatever, they do get up, dust themselves off, and keep going. So the cathartic motivational are the other type. Uh, so aspirational characters like Superman or Wonder Woman when they're written right, Captain America, uh, cathartic motivational, most other characters, certainly Spider-Man, Green Arrow, and such. So in terms of aspirational, a lot of people ask me, you know, the best way how, how to write them, what's a better way to make sure they're writing them correctly. One tip, one trick is, uh, is to decide whether or not your aspirational character, this is a delineation that I, I haven't made in a video before, uh, but it's one that exists nonetheless. Whether or not your aspirational character is sent or chosen. These are two qualifiers, or two descriptors for aspirational heroes. And, uh, I'll come back to those in a second going to drop a lot of terminology on you. I apologize. But once again, I do have links up in the top right hand corner uh, if you want to get a little bit more in-depth descriptions of these. But the other descriptors or terms I want to drop on you are the uh, a refresher for the, the video I did on the origin story of a superhero. There are two elements to a superhero's origin story. You have the call to adventure and the empowerment. And these two can happen in either order. It, you know, it depends on the hero, depends on their story. And then there are three descriptors that describe the call to adventure and the empowerment. The descriptors are destiny, trauma, or chance. So, for example, I said Superman before. Superman, uh, it, like is like a great aspirational hero, is going to be mostly destiny driven in his call to adventure and empowerment. And in fact, he is both. Uh, if the story's done well, Jor-El, of course, they need to fire him off of Cal of uh, Krypton to save his life, but that's not the be-all and end-all of that origin story. Kal-El does some research. Where is he going to send his son? He's not just going to blast him off into space, any old place out there. He does research, decides to send him to Earth for a number of reasons. Because of Earth's atmosphere, he knows that this will give Kal-El certain powers and whatnot because of his own, um, you know, physiology and everything. But then also because uh, of the people, the humanity in Earth. He knows that they can be a great people. They lack the light to show them away. So we get this wonderful picture of, uh, of, of, a, of a Moses type slash Christ type being sent by the Father to, uh, to Earth. So he's sent. <clears throat> and the sent aspirational heroes are uh, even fewer than the chosen ones. They're still vitally important. It's vitally important that we have somebody like Superman. 
But, uh, but that's all destiny driven. So I'll get back to the sent versus chosen thing in a second. Uh, then you can have a character like Spider-Man, for example, who is given his powers by chance. That's his, his empowerment came by chance, whereas Superman's call to adventure and empowerment came in the one decision that Jor-El made to send him to Earth. Uh, and, he, and even in a lot of stories to send him where the Kents might find him, knowing that the Kents would raise him in a certain way. Spider-Man, he gets his empowerment first. The spider powers. Totally by chance, the spider bites him. And uh, I know that sometimes they try to rewrite it. Oh, well, you know, like the Amazing Spider-Man films, his parents put stuff in his DNA or something. That's that's totally later. That's not, not part of the, the real uh, character of the architect there. It's chance that the spider bites him and gives him these spider powers. And what does he do with those powers? He uses them for his own selfish use. He, he goes out and uh, tries to get money and whatnot for a car or whatever, depending on the, the different telling. It's not until his Uncle Ben is shot by the same man that uh, that he could have stopped that that's his call to adventure. So he gets his empowerment by chance, and then his call to adventure comes through trauma. So again, check the video for, for a more in-depth explanation, but the, the two parts to a hero's uh, origin are call to adventure, and empowerment can come in either order, and the three descriptors are destiny, trauma, and chance. Now, aspirational heroes, as I've already alluded to with my description of Superman there, uh, are mostly going to be destiny-driven in their empowerment and their uh, call to adventure. Wonder Woman's another. When she's done correctly, Wonder Woman is aspirational. She doesn't have to suffer these moral failings. She doesn't deal with her uncontrollable rage or, or any of this nonsense. Um, she is given these powers by the gods... At her birth, um, sometimes you can write it to where she's given them, you know, on her mission or whatever. But, you know, in either case, she's given them, you know, before or right shortly after the time she, she comes to uh, to man's world. And uh, her call to adventure is being sent from Themyscira. She doesn't run away from Themyscira with a boy. She doesn't defy her mother's wishes and leave Themyscira. She's sent. She's sent to return Steve Trevor. And sometimes at the same time, sometimes a little later, this is tacked on, but it's very important that she's sent as an emissary, an ambassador from Themyscira to Man's World to show them their ways, to teach them their ways, which are not brutal warlike ways, which are you only lift your hand after you first extended it in peace. And, uh, you know, they're a technologically advanced race on Themyscira. They're not some brutal, you know, warrior women. They've got, you know, their, their science is, is above, uh, you know, above average and all of this kinds of stuff because they've been able to, uh, thrive and evolve with that without any sort of, uh, warring behavior, you know, for so long in isolation. So sent, sent again. So Superman and Wonder Woman are two examples of aspirational characters who are sent. So what's an aspirational character who's more chosen? Well, just because a character's chosen doesn't automatically make them aspirational. But sometimes, sometimes the act of being chosen can take a character and make them, transform them almost into aspirational. That's very rare. I wouldn't even call them traditional aspirational because aspirational heroes kind of have to be there from the start. But you can make the case in a lot of these stories that there, that there was an aspirational person inside that character or whatever. Uh, Green Lantern is a great example of a character who's chosen. The ring chooses him. The ring goes out and finds a worthy successor to Abin Sur. Uh, other characters who, who work off of that archetype, you know, Nova from Marvel, certainly. Any character where the talisman is involved. And the talisman is a type of weapon or a type of uh, tool for empowerment. And there's another video I've done on that as well. Uh, so the talisman, like the ring, like the Nova helmet, like something like that, that goes out and chooses the one who can wield it. You know, it's King Arthur and the and the Excalibur. You know, it's it's uh, Aladdin and the lamp, that kind of thing. So there's a there's a, a, a choose. They, they find something within you that makes you chosen, makes you worthy. You know, Mjolnir for Thor, for example. So that's a that's a chosen aspect to it, and and a character like Hal Jordan, for example, is going to be. Uh, can be cathartic motivational, right? He's not perfect. He's got some uh, some issues to work out. Yet the ring chooses him because it sees that that whole innate bravery within him and that willingness to be the hero within him for self-sacrifice and that that draws him along the aspirational path. And depending on the ways he's written, you know, he can he can be written as to more uh, leaning towards more aspirational or not. The problem though, and you want to be careful for this is that if you're going to write a true aspirational hero, 
they can't have too much in the way to overcome. So, for example, this is what the recent Shazam movie did wrong with Billy Batson. Billy Batson is aspirational. He's supposed to be this child who has guarded his heart and never allowed the bitterness to seep in, no matter all of the things he's been through. And uh, the movie, based on Jeff John's redo of of, uh, of that Captain Marvel, you know, Shazam, with the New 52, uh, took the path of, no, he is bitter. He is bitter. He's uh, he's allowed all of this bitterness to seep in. Um but deep down, he does still want to protect people, and, you know, uh, the wizard will go ahead and choose him to kind of redeem him a little bit. If you've got a redemption arc built into your story, you do not have an aspirational character at all. At all. Uh, Billy Batson, if you want a really good, uh, you know, if you're, if you're too lazy to read the books and you want a really good example, then check out the Superman Shazam animated short that DC did, the DC Showcase, that they did uh, not too terribly long ago. Classic, wonderful, wonderful example, wonderful portrayal of uh, of Billy Batson as a as an aspirational pure child chosen by the wizard for his purity. The reason these kinds of characters resonate for us, uh, that the, the idea of being chosen, is because we all we all want to be chosen. We all know we're not worthy to be sent, at least not in our initial state. Right? Um, being sent is is something that the gods are you know, or that the sons of gods are, something like that in religion and mythologies throughout. You know, certainly you think about a Christ-like uh, figure. Um, any kind of religion has, has emissaries uh, or gods themselves being sent to the people. And that's the standard. You want to live up to that. But what you can hope to be in this life, you know, myth- mythologically, historically speaking, spoken, is uh, chosen. So there's a, there's, there's a trope in... Um, in all religions or mythologies, the idea that you're chosen by God or chosen by the gods. So Christianity, you know, you got the idea of the elect or predestination, no matter how you want to, you know, interpret that. Um, you know, Israel, the chosen people of God, that's even a concept you see in Islam. Uh, you certainly see it in, in other mythologies. Egypt was certainly the chosen people, the enlightened ones. Greeks, you know, would, uh, would ally their cities and whatnot, uh, around certain gods so they can be the chosen people of those gods, you know, on back to Mesopotamia and so on. You, they, they wanted to align themselves, identify with, be chosen, be special. Because to, to be chosen is to be special. And it's to say that you've got a destiny before you. You can be greater than you are. You know, everybody wants to be chosen. Chosen is a is a, an immediately relatable characteristic. And if you're going to write an aspirational character who who isn't, you know, flawed and, and, and dealing with all these horrible traumas and everything like that, but just good from the beginning and you uh, want to make them a little more relatable. You don't want them to be seen as too much of a, on a pedestal and, and nobody can really relate to them. Um, then make them chosen because people are related, uh, re- can relate to the idea of being chosen. And I should say too, that the aspirational hero does not mean that uh, this person is um, completely like unhuman because of their, uh, their you know, inhuman because of their uh, wonderful purity or whatever. No, no, no. I mean, somebody like Superman is going to struggle, uh, you know, he can have emotions and all of like that, but he always does the right thing because he knows it's the right thing to do. He doesn't have to be convinced that something's the right thing to do because of, uh, you know, because of a mistake he makes or because of, um, you know, some great trauma or whatever that happens to him. So, uh, that's the idea. Going a little long with this, so I'm going to wrap it up, but there's a lot more to talk about this. There's a lot more specifics in the, in the pra- application of, uh, of, of making, an aspirational hero, writing an aspirational hero, when you decide to make them a chosen versus a sent or whatever like that. Uh, a lot more to say about that. So if you have specific questions, feel free to ask them. I will try to uh, to address them. We can talk about it on a live stream sometime, or I can do more videos in this vein. I do have some more archetypes to get to as well, specific sub-archetypes. Um, but I will try and get back to those videos because they do seem to be popular. So that's all for now. Uh, stay tuned. I do have uh, more live streams, reviews, and everything coming up. And until then, keep enjoying and digging deeper into the hero stories you love. Thanks for watching.